my, my son wanted to play for the Pirates, and he played Adam, Bantam, and Midget Hockey for the Pirates. And uh, the team that we're honoring today set an example of the uh, quality of people who uh, like to see wearing the Pirates uniforms. And uh, my son continues to be my favorite hockey player in and out of the NHL. And uh, I'm really pleased that he grew up in the Pirates organization and to follow the people who were being honored today as inductees into the Wall of Fame. And we're going to ask Frank McGinnis to come up and uh, make the introductory remarks. Deputy Mayor, Induction Committee, <coughs> inductees, friends and relatives of the inductees, welcome here today. Port Hawkesbury has known many sports teams and individuals that have brought a lot of pride and recognition to the town and to the straight area but none more so than the 1967-68 straight Pirates. Classified as a Junior B team, this group of individuals collectively performed at a much higher level. This team was made up of highly skilled individuals that were molded into a well-oiled machine by coach Phil Daggerich. Many will recall the passion and the motivation that Coach Dagg was injected. Indeed, that inspired the team to perform at such a high level. Looking at old score sheets, it was apparent that the scoring was spread out among many players. It was also interesting to note that over the course of the season that most of the players were able to score four or five goal games. Quite an achievement for a team to have that kind of balance. Kicked out of the Cape Breton Junior League because of their overwhelming dominance of the remaining three teams in the league, the management of the Pirates <coughs> decided to con continue on as an independent team. This meant a successful schedule of exhibition games against other junior teams, as well as strong intermediate teams that were generally made up of uh, ex-collegiate and senior players. Also notable at this time were one-game losses to St. Avex and St. Mary's, who were ranked nationally at uh, the university level. I could also note at this time that the team that beat, the St. Vex team that beat the Pirates 3-2 were the team that defeated the Toronto Marlboros 4-1, who were at that time the biggest team in hockey and who had several players that went on to the NHL. So that can give you just a bit of measure of the uh, quality of play of this team. <coughs> Success continued in the playoffs as the Pirates dominated Glace Bay, Digby, and Windsor to win the Nova Scotia Junior B hockey title. It was on, then on to the St. John, New Brunswick to clinch the Maritime title in straight games. And they completed their playoff sweep by defeating St. John's Newfoundland to capture the Atlantic title. One of the disappointments of the season was the failure to play against the Halifax Junior Canadians, who were accused, I suppose with good reason, of refusing to play the Pirates in fear of losing to a Junior B team. <laughs> I should also mention the Pirate fans, or perhaps we could call them fanatics who filled the old rink to the rafters, as well as following this team on their road trips to bring loud and boisterous support to the opposing team's rinks. And you can well remember them drowning out the home team. This has been a weekend of reliving past glories and sharing personal memories of a special group of individuals in a special time and in a special place. I guess this weekend you have memories that will live forever. And as Phil Daglish once stated, 
There will never be another team like this. At this time, though, I would like to pause and ask for a moment of remembrance for three value, very valued members of this organization. One was player Gary McCauley, trainer Fred Hearn, and coach Phil Daglish. Thank you. In closing, I want to state that I take great pride and satisfaction in nominating this team for induction into the Port Hawkesbury Sports Wall of Fame. Here. Just wanted to mention that Frankie was around that time. I believe. Early to mid 1960s, he was involved in scouting players for the Pirates, and I'm sure he came up with players for that team as well as some of the others. Uh, we're going to have uh, Deputy Mayor Woodrow present the uh, uh, certificates, the pictures, and the uh, Cape Breton crystal glassware to the players, and then to the executive. And uh, as I call you, call your name. Uh, hope you'll make your way up here. And we'll start with the captain of the team, Paul Stanley. <laughs> Had the privilege of having coffee with this uh, former popular straight pirate this morning, Ron Robichaud. See Dave Crothers is next in line over there somewhere, so I'll ask Dave to come up and receive from Trevor. <laughs> and Jerry Burke is over there. Al Acorn. <laughs> and Dick Forsyth. Dick Forsyth came all the way from Ottawa to be with us today, and uh, Al Acorn came from someplace in Ontario, not sure exactly where. Right Grove. Right Grove, Ontario. And next is uh, Stu Murray, who came all the way from Spring Hill. Hilliard Grays from Dartmouth. <laughs> Sandy McDonald from uh, New York. Player who said yes is coming before he even said you're coming to what? <laughs> it's 40 Graham.
and receiving the awards for his uh, brother Martin is Harold Gillis. And for the trainer, the late Fred Hearn, his uh, wife Sadie will come up. The executive of the team is uh, Red Roddy McDonald. And Billy Joe McLean. Okay. Paul? Unveil. I'd like Paul Stanley to the podium to say a few words on behalf of the Straight Pirates. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mayor, and the committee that worked so hard to get us in this Hall of Fame. I'd like to thank everybody, thank all the players that ended up showing up with this real surprise. What are you doing? That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out this afternoon and offer first congratulations to all of the new inductees who are honored members of the Port Hotspur Sports Wall of Fame, class of 2013. I'd like to thank the... <laughs> the town staff who assisted in this project. Artist Lisa Harrison uh, did a great job with the <laughs> portraits. Maritime Inns has provided a great deal of food. The next edition, induction ceremony for the Sports Wall of Fame, well, we try every two years. This one ran three years, but we try every two years. Perhaps it'll be 2015 when we will have another exciting class. Hard to top this one, I gotta say that. And uh, Port Hawkesbury does have a rich sports heritage, as Boris Termy went into in some detail, starting back to the days when they had uh, race yacht races or boat races in the Strait of Canso and horse races on the ice in the wintertime. The portraits will be installed in the upper mezzanine. I'm not sure where Catherine is, but she told me she would install them about uh, 3.30. And if you want to see where you're going to be, it's going to be up there pretty soon. And we will hope that if you don't get a chance to see them today, or even if you do, that you will come back and see yourself, your friends, family members, as they are displayed on the Port Hotspur Sports Wall of Fame. I hope that you have uh, considered this afternoon time well spent. Drive home safely. Thank you.